independence, it was fighting against that colonial military. Okay, it wasn't fighting against like waves of people coming from Spain. That's not what happened. It was basically people born in Mexico versus people born in Mexico. And then the colonial military switched sides and decided to fight for independence. And when they fought, when they switched sides, there was nobody left to fight for Spain. And so like the, the Spanish colonial government in Mexico City collapsed. Like there was nobody left to fight for Spain. So it, when you put it in that perspective, the the Mexican military, it was it was largely made up like the, the Mexican military that won Mexico's independence. The one that marched into Mexico City and said, we are now independent. It was mostly the colonial military. It was 7,000 colonial soldiers that joined together with uh, 1,600 rebel fighters. So the rebel fighters were led by Vicente Guerrero. You probably know who that is, right? Right? Uh, Vicente Guerrero, he's one of Mexico's founding fathers. Well, the colonial military was a, uh, run by a guy named Agustin de Iturbide. And those two came together and joined forces. There were actually more colonial soldiers in Mexico's first official military than like actual insurgents, which is really fascinating. Mexico's colonial military essentially became Mexico's post-independence military. I, you know, I have my YouTube channel. I'm gonna start adding more to that. I, I, I wasn't putting stuff on my YouTube channel just because I was working on my genealogy course. I, I have a 10 part course I put the, the website in the description. It's um, dailychella.com slash learn. If you go to the description, you'll be able to see the, the website to sign up. But in there, I have so much stuff. It's a 10 part series and it goes through every single phase. Like it shows like the origin, like um, Native American origins. It shows like uh, basically like the early origins of Mesoamerica. And then it shows like, uh, the early origins of Castilla in Spain, because that's that's part of our other route, right? Um, so you see like the early origins of the the crown of Castilla, the kingdom of Castilla in Spain, and then also the early origins of Mesoamerica. And then I show how they converge in Mexico. And then I, I talk about the conquest of Tenochtitlan. And then it shows the construction of the Mexican nation, okay? Because remember, Tenochtitlan is just one city in Mexico. It was Mexico City. That's the story of Mexico City. But if you're from Chihuahua, or if you're from Durango, or if you're from the Yucatan, if, or if you're from uh, Oaxaca, all those places have different histories. It's not the same thing. Like there's different native groups there. There were different settlers that went there. So my program will show you each step of the way. <clears throat> so it brings you through those phases. And as you go through those phases, I show you how to do your ancestry in each of those phases. So um, we go over like the Spanish Inquisition. I show you how to find Spanish Inquisition records to see if your family was ever convicted by the Spanish Inquisition in Mexico. So I show you how to find that stuff. I show you how to find census records, okay, from the, from the 1500s until the um, 1800s, Spain conducted a bunch of census records all throughout Mexico. And, and it documents like native ancestry, African ancestry, Spanish ancestry, all of those things are listed in the census records. And so you'd be able to say like, oh, I'm from the town of, I'm from like La Ciudad de, de Durango. I'm from like the city of Durango. You'd be able to go in there, find your town, and then go and like pull out the census records and then go through the census records. It's, it's an amazing, absolutely amazing tool for your genealogy research. And so I show you how to find that. I show you how to find titles of nobility, stuff like that. Uh, just all kinds of stuff. And, uh, and, and it, it basically gives you all the tools you'll need to like basically like really hammer down and catch as much as possible, as much as what's, what's possible with uh, what's available out there. Uh, will it walk you through how to, yes, it, it walks you through everything, like how to get started, where to sign up. There's really, if you, if, if you really want to dig into your ancestry, it even shows you how to like identify your indigenous ancestry. Like I wish these tools were available when I first started, they weren't available. Like, um, I didn't, I mean, a lot of us don't even know these things exist, right? Cause I mean, who, who knew that 300 years of colonial records exist all throughout Mexico and we can document everything. And that we're like the most documented people on earth, like really from like the 1500s to the 1800s. There's really no other place on planet earth that is as documented as Mexico. 
you know, we don't like nobody knows that, you know, and there's so much stuff. And we're always told by people, oh, our history's gone. Our history's gone. Like, no, you have a family and you have a family history and it can be researched, period. Like, that's just it, period. And so uh, my course will show you how to get started with all that stuff. But I weave it in with history because you guys see my style, like my style, like I do genealogy, but I mix in like history to give you context. That's what this does. It will show you like it, it gives you the history and it gives you everything in detail. And then it plugs in the genealogical um, tips all throughout the series. Mexica equals Mexican. Yeah, so I've actually covered the word Mexican, like the origins of the word Mexican. Originally, it just meant people from the island of Mexico and like the island of uh, Mexico doesn't exist anymore. It's like where Mexico City was. But anyways, there was an indigenous groups that lived there. There were two towns. There was Tenochtitlan and Tlatelolco. And if you were from one of those two towns, you were a Mexica. And then, and then the word kind of expanded. It kind of expanded to if you spoke Nahuatl, you were a Mexica or excuse me, a Mexicano. And so I like the word Mexicano sort of started with the island of Mexico and then it, it kind of expanded out from there. But if you're, but Mexica is clearly like only if you live in those two cities, like Mexica is, you have to live in either Tenochtitlan or Tlatelolco in the colonial times or like pre-colonial times. Now, the lesser talked about aspect of the word Mexicano, when Cortez and the Spaniards and Tlaxcalans, when they conquered the Aztec Empire. The Aztec Empire was like central Mexico. And so, you know, Puebla, uh, Estado de Mexico, um, parts of Oaxaca, parts of Chiapas, parts of um, Veracruz, like all that, like central Mexico was all part of the Aztec Empire. Now, it wasn't called Aztec Empire. That's not what it wasn't called like Imperio, Mexi uh, Imperio Aztec. It wasn't like they like uh, there wasn't a clear word that they use like they had like a word like anawak which meant like the land around uh, Tenochtitlan but um essentially what the Spaniards did when they conquered Tenochtitlan they created a separate like a, they created a jurisdiction called the kingdom of Mexico el reino de Mexico there was an actual kingdom in the colonial period in the colonial period in central Mexico that was carved out as El Reino de Mexico, the Kingdom of Mexico. And they used the same like eagle on a cactus emblem that we, that Mexico uses, that we use. They use that too in the colonial period. It, uh, it's not, it's not an issue of like, oh, like we became independent and we brought back all this Aztec symbolism. That's not what happened. Like that's, that's completely like not what happened. All throughout the colonial period, they used Aztec symbolism all throughout the colonial period. There was like crests, like the, the crest of Mexico City is an eagle on a cactus from the colonial period. The crest of the kingdom of Mexico, like that was all of central Mexico, that was an eagle on a cactus. And so sometimes they would put it with a snake, sometimes without a snake, but it's the same emblem. And so that stuff started in the colonial period. A lot of people don't know that. And so when they were so, oh, so, okay, so Nueva España, that's a, that's, okay, that's a good question. Nueva España, okay, so all the dominions that Spain had in North America, that was Nueva España. But inside Nueva España, there were various kingdoms, okay, and provinces. So if you lived in Puebla or Mexico City, you were inside El Reino, the kingdom of Mexico. Or if Michoacán was also part of the kingdom of Mexico. Now, if you were from Jalisco, you were from El Reino de Nueva Galicia, the Kingdom of Nueva Galicia. So there were various provinces inside Nueva España. Okay, so think of Nueva España as like essentially like saying North America. Oh, Tamaulipas, that would have been called Nuevo Santander. There was also like a, like that wasn't called Tamaulipas before. It was called Nuevo Santander for like 300 years. Yeah, Durango Records, Durango was part of Nueva Vizcaya. Nueva Vizcaya, that's right. Yeah, exactly. El Reino de Nueva Galicia. And Nueva Vizcaya, that's like Durango and parts of um, Zacatecas. Uh, or, excuse me, Zacatecas was part of Nueva Galicia. Sinaloa was part of a place called Nueva Navarra. All these places had other names. And so basically, like, after independence, Mexico kind of, like, carved up the map differently. And when they carved up the map differently, it caused a bunch of civil wars. Because it's like, people are like, hey, I was the governor of that place. And now you cut my kingdom in half and like you turn it into some other state. And so Mexico had like these 
crazy it's like part that's part of what like what texas like texas right texas was like a different form in the colonial period it was like a different form and then when mexico became independent they started recarving everything and people started getting pissed off and so there were separatist movements of criollos and mestizos who were like hey i didn't sign up to be mexican like i was a spanish citizen last year and like now you came in and like you carved up this map differently and so like that was one thing that like uh, there was a very rocky transition to independence a very rocky transition mexico had civil wars for like the next hundred years because of this stuff and then also too like when mexico became independent it came, it became independent under completely different pretenses. I'm going to do a, like, I'm going to do a lot of videos on this, uh, because this, this is like almost never talked about, but when Mexico became independent, it became independent and they formed what's called the Mexican empire. And like, we had our own emperor and stuff like that. So Mexico, like that was its first form of government. It was an empire. And the guy who was Mex like the commander of Mexico's military, Agustin Iturbide, he was the commander of the military and they made him emperor, essentially, because he won the war. But what happened was he was overthrown. When they marched into Mexico City, they made Iturbide emperor, okay? Uh, Vicente Guerrero was okay with that. He was like, okay, you're the new emperor. And like, there's letters that like Vicente Guerrero had sent to like Iturbide saying, hey, congratulations. You know, like there was like a coronation ceremony where like they put the crown on Iturbide. And so he was like the, like the, like the legit emperor. So everybody was on board. And then the United States got involved. 